Hey y'all, what's good, what's poppin'? So for today's video, I wanna make another skincare related video. Today, I just wanna sit down and talk about some of my favorite Korean skincare products that I've tried so far this year. I just wanna talk about these products, what they've done for me, why I love them. And if you're someone that's also interested in Korean skincare, maybe you can find something in here that you're interested in trying out, or maybe you're just interested to see what I've been using and loving. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna be going over all of that. If y'all are interested in skincare and specifically Korean skincare, if there's any products that y'all have tried this year that y'all have been loving, feel free to leave those down in the comments below. I'm always looking for suggestions for new products to try. But with that being said, before we get into it, I do just want to say thank you to all my new and returning subscribers out there. Thank y'all so much for sticking around, supporting my content, and helping me to grow my channel. If you are new here and you haven't already, please be sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell button as well so that you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. And with that being said, let's get into it. So I'm going to leave a link down in the description for y'all to go ahead and check these out if you're interested in purchasing any of these. None of these are affiliate links. I've bought all these with my own money just full disclosure but with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and just get into it now i'm gonna go through these in the order that i would use them in my skincare routine just so i have a little bit of a mental organization as i go through this so of course the first step in any skincare routine is cleansers so i have two here that i want to feature and the first one i want to talk about is this glow recipe papaya sorbet enzyme cleansing balm so this is an oil cleanser it melts effortlessly into the skin it breaks down waterproof sunscreen and makeup effectively and it rinses away with no residue so what makes this unique compared to other oil cleansers is that this contains papaya enzymes which provide a gentle chemical exfoliation while you're cleansing your skin. Some other notable ingredients in here include blueberry extract and apricot kernel oil. These are really rich in antioxidants and fatty acids that help to nourish and replenish the skin while you're cleansing so it leaves for a nice gentle cleansing experience. I find that after using this my skin feels really smooth and hydrated. It's bouncy and glowy. It's not stripped or tight or anything like that. There is a slight fragrance to this. A lot of glow recipe products are infamous for having a little bit of a fragrance to them but it's not heavily scented this is a wash off product so of course it washes away with the product but I've really been loving this one and I also think that even though it is expensive it is a pretty decent size you get a little over three ounces of product another great cleansing balm that I've really been enjoying is this clean it zero cleansing balm by vanilla co and this is their original I know that there is a couple different versions of this this is the one that comes in the pinkish purple jar so this has been my go-to oil cleanser and I really enjoyed the experience with this actually in my opinion I feel like it melts the easiest out of any oil cleanser that I've used and it washes away the quickest as well. It also effectively breaks down waterproof sunscreen and makeup. So this contains a proprietary blend of ingredients that they're calling zero balance technology and that basically just consists of mineral water, vitamin E and C and a couple other skin soothing ingredients that really just help to maintain a healthy complexion while you're cleansing. Again this is a pretty similar experience to the Glow Recipe Papaya cleansing balm in that it does effectively break down all my makeup and waterproof sunscreen. It is a really good and effective cleanser but it's also very gentle on the skin. It doesn't leave me feeling dry or stripped and I also really love the size of this this is a six fluid ounce size I believe and I got this for a little over like $25 it might not look that big on camera but this is actually a huge container this actually has more in here than the inky list oat balm cleanser the one that comes in that really long tube so now I want to talk about some toners and skin mists that I've been loving the first one that I want to highlight is this Purito Centella unscented toner I decided to try this one out because I've been trying to incorporate more products that contain Centella Asiatica extract into my skincare routine Centella Asiatica extracts really good for helping to calm irritated and inflamed skin and it also has some antioxidant benefits as well so I've been trying to incorporate products that contain that into my skincare routine just because I am someone that has sensitive and acne prone skin type and that really helps with addressing some of the underlying causes of that and helping to calm and soothe my complexion there's actually two versions of this toner I believe I believe that this is an updated version that they made I think they have one that comes in a dark green container and that one is a pretty similar formula but it also contains fragrance and essential oils and and some of their customers were asking for them to make an unscented version so they came out with this I just want to give them a shout out for listening to customer feedback and actually creating what we wanted this toner has a kind of thick and viscous texture it's not really watery or runny like some other toners and essences I've used in the past it collects nicely in the palm of your hand and I feel like with this I don't need as much as I need with other toners to get the same effect I've been using it for a little bit over three weeks now and as you can see I'm just barely about halfway through it normally I feel like toners last me about three weeks to a month depending on how much I'm using it but with this I find that I don't need to use as much so it's been lasting me a really long time and I love that so as the name suggests the main ingredient in here is centella asiatica extract which like I said helps to soothe inflamed skin help promote skin healing this is really good for acne prone and sensitive skin types like myself it's really done wonders in helping to calm down the redness on my skin whenever I'm breaking out in general it just helps me to maintain a calm and clear complexion in addition to pure centella asiatica extract we've also got some other centella asiatica derived ingredients in here including things like medica 
Acacicide, Asiatic Acide, Asiatic Acid, and Matacasic Acid. We've also got Panthenol in here, also known as Vitamin B5, and this helps to promote barrier function and helps to hydrate the skin and keep it supple. And then there's also Allantoin in here, which helps to calm the skin. So again, this is a really good toner. If you are someone that has sensitive skin, especially acne prone skin, this is really good at helping to keep it in check and helping to calm down that redness both immediately and with continued use over time. Another one that I've really been loving is this Ceramedic Azuline Soothing Mousse Toner. So this toner is actually featured in a video by Glow by Ramon here on YouTube. If y'all are interested in skincare related videos and you have no idea who that is, I'll go ahead and link his channel up here somewhere. Go ahead and check his sister out, show some support. But when he featured this in a video and was talking about it, I knew I immediately had to pick it up for myself and try it out. And I've really been enjoying it so far. As far as toners go, this is a pretty unique toner experience. It dispenses out of a pump like this and it comes out as a foam rather than like a normal watery toner would. And you just work the foam into your skin and it melts into a nice toner texture. This toner has a solid ingredient list. We've got a bunch of skin loving and skin identical ingredients in here. We've got 10 different types of peptides which help with collagen production, helps to fight the signs of aging. We've got ceramide and pea which helps with skin barrier function. We've got licorice root extract which helps to fight the appearance of hyperpigmentation. We've got green tea leaf extract which helps with antioxidant support and it's also skin soothing. We've got aloe leaf extract, guaiazuline, and calamine and all of these have skin soothing properties as well. We've got hyaluronic acid and beta glucans which are humectant ingredients that draw moisture into the skin helping to keep it supple and moisturized. We've got five different forms of centella asiatica extract in here and we've also got tea tree oil which is really good for people with acne prone skin types. It helps to regulate oil production and it has antibacterial properties which help to keep acne bacteria in check which helps address the appearance of breakouts. So as if the ingredients list alone didn't sell me on this, using it for the first time was actually a pretty revolutionary experience for me. It calmed down the redness on my skin pretty much immediately and the way that I like to use this is I like to use this as sort of like an aftershave gel either after I've shaved at home or after I've gotten a haircut when my skin's a little bit more sensitive. I'll just go ahead and take a couple pumps into my hand after I've cleansed my skin of course and apply it to my face and it immediately helps with soothing that and in addition I've noticed since using this there's been a huge reduction in the amount of razor bumps that I get. My complexion's a lot clearer and a lot smoother. The next product I want to feature is this Ilion Ceramide Atto Water Lotion. So this is actually a skin mist. It's not a toner per se but I'm going to include it in here with the skin toners. I also don't really use this as a toner necessarily. What I like to do instead with this is I like to use this to spritz over my face in between skincare steps to keep my skin damp. Damp skin is more part rainbow than dry skin so having damp skin just allows the products that I apply on top to soak into my skin easier for me to get the maximum efficiency out of my skincare products. It's got a pretty basic ingredient list. Not too much going on here. It really just helps to dampen the skin. It does include some ceramide and pea which again ceramides are really good for helping to promote proper barrier function. So like I said I like to use this in between skincare steps to help dampen my skin to help the products that I layer on top to permeate better so that I can get the optimal efficacy out of my skincare products. I also like to spray this in areas like on my knees or in my elbows areas where I tend to get dry dehydrated and ashy and this helps to lock in the moisture and help keep those areas looking nice throughout the day even without lotion though I do like to layer a heavier lotion on top as well just to really lock in that moisture. Another skin mist that I really like is this Cotarex Comfort Ceramide Cream Mist. Both this and the Ilion Skin Mist were recommended in a video by Kevin Cho here on YouTube. I'll go ahead and link his channel up here somewhere as well if you are interested in skincare videos so you can check his channel out. He makes great content as well. This is another really great skin mist and again I use this really similarly to the Ilion Skin Mist. I don't really use it as a toner. I use it more as an in-between step between my skincare products to dampen my skin so that everything absorbs better. It does have a pretty basic ingredient list just like the Ilion Skin Mist but we do have six types of ceramides in here compared to just one in the Ilion Skin Mist. And again ceramides are really good at helping to promote proper barrier function, helping to lock the moisture in and all around just helping to calm and soothe the skin. There's also some Panthenol in here which also helps to further moisturize the skin and promote proper barrier function. The one word of caution I do give about this, I was perusing through the ingredients list and I noticed that this has bergamot fruit oil in here. It makes your skin more sensitive to ultraviolet light. Just for that reason alone, I don't really use it during the day because I don't want to risk irritating my skin potentially. It is pretty low on the ingredients list so I don't really know what if any concern it would be but just for that reason alone like I said I haven't tried using it during the daytime so I don't know whether it's going to cause problems during the day or not. That being said while I do use it strictly at night it hasn't caused me any issues that way. It doesn't irritate or break out my skin at all. It feels nice and comfortable. So this is what I like to use at night to help keep my skin looking supple and to help dampen my skin in between skincare steps. So now I want to talk about some serums and some ampules. The first one I want to talk about is this Pure Heels Centella 90 ampule. 
So this contains 90% Centella Asiatica extract, as the name might suggest. And like I mentioned earlier, Centella Asiatica extract is really good for sensitive and inflamed skin types. It really helps with promoting skin regeneration, helping to calm down inflamed skin. Other ingredients in here that are really good for helping to calm down redness include aloe extract, green tea leaf extract, niacinamide, and propolis. Again, these are all good at helping to soothe the skin. Some of them provide antioxidant benefits. And in the case of propolis as well, it helps with not only promoting skin healing, but also it has some antimicrobial properties that again help with regulating acne bacteria on the skin which can help reduce the appearance of breakouts and inflammation we've also got squalane shea butter hyaluronic acid and ceramide 3 which again help promote a proper barrier function and also help to further moisturize the skin it has a lightweight gel texture but it absorbs nicely into the skin and i like to use this in conjunction with the ceramic mousse toner i find that this combination in particular using them as like an aftershave or just when my skin is looking really inflamed in general helps to calm things down quickly and really helps with soothing and repairing my skin. If my skin is breaking out or looking a little inflamed, within a few days the issue does tone down significantly. So I've really been loving this ampule a lot. I'm about to run out, but I think I'm going to restock on this one because it's done wonders for my skin. The next serum I want to talk about is this Eye Unique Tea Tree Relief Serum. So this is another great serum for people with oily, sensitive, and especially breakout prone skin types like myself. I find that using this consistently really helps to keep my complexion in check. The main ingredient in here is 67% tea tree water extract. Again, tea tree is really good with helping to regulate sebum production and it also has antimicrobial properties which help to keep acne bacteria in check which in turn helps with improving the appearance of breakouts. We've also got 20% Centella Asiatica extract in here which helps to calm the skin, soothe redness, and promote skin healing. Some other notable ingredients in here include niacinamide and adenosine which help to revitalize the skin and improve skin tone. This is pretty watery in texture. Texture wise it's more similar to like a toner or an essence than a true serum. I find that I end up using about half a dropper's worth each time but it's actually a pretty big size you got a little over 1.7 fluid ounces of product in here even though i am using a little bit more product than i would with a serum each time i use it because it is such a big size compared to other serums it kind of balances out in the end i'm going through it at about the same rate that i would any other serum i've been using it on and off for about two months now and i'm not even halfway through the product so i feel like this is going to last me a pretty long time i like to use this especially when my skin's really inflamed when i have like a cluster of breakouts going on on my face somewhere and this helps to keep my complexion in check and within a couple days of consistent use I noticed that my skin tone and texture and the redness has improved significantly so I really love using this when my skin is a little bit more angry and needs a little bit of extra help. Another serum that I want to talk about is this Soulceuticals Day Glow Serum. So this is supposed to be a dupe of the SkinCeuticals C plus E Ferulic Acid Serum I believe and even here with the name Soulceuticals like this is screaming dupe to me like it's pretty obvious what they were trying to go for with this. There are some key differences between this serum and the SkinCeuticals serum. This one contains 20% vitamin C in the form of sodium ascorbyl phosphate, whereas the SkinCeuticals one contains 15% vitamin C in the form of ascorbic acid, which is pure vitamin C. And it is water soluble and stable, so it has a longer shelf life than the SkinCeuticals serum. And vitamin C is kind of like niacinamide. It's a multifaceted skincare ingredient and it performs a bunch of functions. It provides antioxidant support. It helps to neutralize free radical damage, which makes it really good to layer underneath sunscreen. It helps with fighting hyperpigmentation. It helps to promote collagen production production among other things. Some other notable ingredients in here include ferulic acid and vitamin E. These help with providing antioxidant support and help to further stabilize the vitamin C. There's a plant-based form of hyaluronic acid which serves as a humectant ingredient to help draw moisture into the skin. And then we've also got aloe extract and centella asiatica extract to help soothe the skin and help fight inflammation. This has a pretty watery texture as well. It's not quite as watery as the eye unique but it's not viscous by any means either. I do find that it also has a slight citrusy scent to it it but it fades pretty immediately after you work it in it doesn't linger at all this absorbs really nicely into the skin it leaves my skin looking nice and supple and glowy and like i said it really helps to fight free radicals and help provide a second layer of defense against environmental stressors so i like to layer this underneath on my sunscreen just to help give it a little bit of a boost and i've found that this in conjunction with the other products that i've been using not only helps to give my skin a nice glow but it's also really helped with fighting my hyperpigmentation and uneven skin tone next i want to talk about a couple moisturizers i'm a little hesitant to call them straight up moisturizers because it's not like a day cream or anything. These are both night creams, but I've really been loving them and they've been doing wonders for my skin. The first one I want to talk about is this Sun By Me Yuja Niacin Brightening Sleep Mask. So this contains 70% Yuja extract, which is really rich in vitamin C, which again, helps with promoting an even skin tone, collagen production, antioxidant defense, among other things. And Yuja itself is also really hydrating and moisturizing to the skin. We've got 5% niacinamide in here, which again, helps promote an even skin tone. It helps to promote 
proper barrier function. It helps with regulating sebum production, among other things. Glutathione and Arbutin also help to promote an even skin tone and help fight hyperpigmentation. And there's also a complex of other ingredients like vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin B12, centella asiatica extract, and adenosine that help to revitalize the skin and help promote a more healthy looking complexion. It has a nice lightweight gel texture. It's almost like a water cream. It soaks into the skin really well. There is a slight citrusy scent upon application, but again, just like the Soulceutical Serum, it disappears when you work it into the skin. It doesn't linger at all. This leaves my skin looking nice and glowing. Like I said, it really helps to revitalize my complexion and it is a night mask, so I only use it at night, but when I wake up, I feel like my skin just looks extra awake. I look like I've gotten a good night's sleep every time I use this. And this has done wonders for helping to promote a more even skin tone and helping to fight my hyperpigmentation overnight as well. Another sleeping mask that I've really been loving is this Dr. Jart Cicapera Tiger Grass Sleep Air Intensive Mask. So this is another lightweight night mask that's supposed to help improve skin tone and texture. This one also has a really nice gel cream consistency that soaks easily into the skin. This contains a complex of ingredients that Dr. Jart is calling their green repair solution. And basically this consists of things including a bunch of different types of Centella Asiatica extract, minerals, humectants including panthenol and glycerin and a probiotic ferment and all of these ingredients work synergistically to help soothe the skin hydrate it and help to promote skin repair some other notable ingredients include niacinamide turmeric root extract moringa seed oil and adenosine i like to use this when my skin is looking angry or inflamed i've been reaching a lot more for this especially since i've been filming more makeup videos because that does tend to break me out and i find that when i use this if my skin looks really angry and inflamed when i go to bed come morning time the redness and the inflammation has calmed down significantly. And then lastly, I just want to talk about two Korean sunscreens that I've been using and really enjoying. I've actually used a bunch of different sunscreens this year, pretty much exclusively Japanese and Korean. If y'all are interested in seeing a dedicated video on the sunscreens that I've used this year that I've enjoyed, let me know down in the comments below. I'm considering making one of those, but I just want to touch on two here that I've been using recently that I really like and enjoy. The first one is this Etude House Sun Prize Mild Watery Light SPF 50 PA 3+. So this is a chemical sunscreen. They have a physical version as well by the same brand and it has a pretty similar packaging but there was a lot of comments in the reviews mentioning that it had a pretty noticeable white cast so I kind of steered away from that one. This has a pretty solid ingredients list. We've got things like aloe vera, cactus extract, hyaluronic acid, acai berry, and centella asiatica extract and these all help to hydrate and soothe the skin and these also help to fight the effects of UV light and free radical damage and this helps provide a second line of defense from the sun's rays in addition to the chemical sunscreen ingredients in here. It dries onto a nice satiny skin like finish. It's not greasy or shiny like a lot of Western sunscreens are. It just feels nice and comfortable on the skin and it doesn't break me out at all, which is really important in a sunscreen for me. I've been loving this one and I've been reaching for this a lot recently. And then the last sunscreen I want to feature is this Make Prem UV Defense Me Blu ray Sun Fluid SPF 50 PA4. This was actually featured in a video by Susan Yara. She was doing a skincare routine, I think specifically for sensitive skin, and she used this product. So I was immediately intrigued and I wanted to go ahead and try it out. This is a physical sunscreen and it is non-tinted. However, unlike a lot of other non-tinted physical sunscreens, this one doesn't really leave a white cast at all. It does kind of collect and leave a little bit of a cast in the beard, but I can just wipe that away with the tissue, no issue. As far as the face is concerned, it looks pretty good. It doesn't really contrast my skin at all. It doesn't leave a white or a purplish cast like some of these other physical sunscreens can. However, that being said, I'm not necessarily dark skinned by any means and I can't really speak to how this will look on a really dark skin tone, but on those that have a skin tone similar to mine or lighter, you don't really need to worry about this having a white cast. There's a couple plant extracts in here, which truth be told, I can't pronounce the name of, so I'm not gonna go ahead and try, but I did do a little bit of a Google search on them and research has shown them to be promising in helping to calm and soothe the skin. We've also got hyaluronic acid as a humectant in here to help draw moisture into the skin. And we've got panthenol and centella asiatica extract to help promote skin healing and proper barrier function. This dries down to a matte finish, but it's a comfortable matte. It's not drying, which is really important to me. I've tried some sunscreens that dry down to a matte finish but they're kind of drying and almost like chalky. This is actually probably one of the better sunscreens I've tried for oily skin types like myself. It really helps to keep my complexion looking refreshed and renewed all day without looking dry or overly matte. It's really comfortable on the skin and it provides top tier UV protection both UVA and UVB. So I've been reaching for this more recently on days when it's really sunny and I'm going to be spending a significant amount of time outside. It lasts a long time. It really helps protect my skin. So I really love that sunscreen and that's one that I've 
I've been reaching for a lot recently as well. Yeah, but with that being said, that's it for my Korean skincare favorites so far of 2021. Let me know down in the comments what, if any, Korean skincare products y'all have been loving recently. Let me know if you've tried out any of the products I've mentioned in this video and whether you've enjoyed them or not. But with that being said, that's gonna be the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you liked about this video or what you disliked. Let me know also if you have any video requests or suggestions for future videos so I can keep those in mind when I'm sitting down and thinking of things to film. Like I said, if you haven't already, just be sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell button as well so that you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. And with that being said, I should be back shortly with new content. Bye.